great boxer, great person, great athlete. The great Gregory Dyer enters the ring. Thank you very much. And all my, I see all my Lenny McKinley people, and I really appreciate the SEO one. Yeah. Gregory Dyer, with just inspiring words, and he's a passionate fighter, a passionate man. Yeah, well deserved to be honored. Of Columbus. Well deserved to be honored today. Well deserving honor. Can I get uh, first bout to the ring? Oh, we are ready for our first amateur bout of the night. Fighting out of the red corner. Mr. Quentin Woods from the Redeem team. He is nine years old. He weighs 61 pounds. He has two amateur fights under his belt. Fighting Trident Reed out of the blue corner. He is fighting from the Jim Betty. And he is also nine years old. He is 62 pounds. And he has four amateur fights under his belt. Okay, okay. This is what I'm excited to see. We're getting over our first fights of the night. And as we can see, Mr. Quentin Woods. And we take a look at Quentin Woods in the corner. And Mr. Trident Reed as he circles the ring. And he is ready for action. Yes, Quentin Woods will be in your red corner. And Trenton, and Trenton Reed out of Beatty will be in your blue corner tonight. Well, as we can see, 61 pounds, 62 pounds. I'm imagining I see 160 punches in the first round. <laughs> this is a fairly even fight, you know, just one pound. I'll call this even weight. Both fighters getting instructions, last minute instructions in the corner. All right, ladies and gentlemen, kings and queens, we have paid homage to our I can dig. All right. Coming up first, we have in the red corner representing the Redeem team. Put your hands together for Mr. Tim Woods. And in the blue corner, fighting out of Baby Recreation Center, please put your hands together for Mr. Trendon Reed. Woods and Reed, they step to the middle. They get some last-minute instructions from the referee, and just momentarily, we will be underway. <laughs> oh, these young fighters look ready. All right. Two, get in tight 
And Here there's the opening bell. Both of them posturing. Wood starts out with a jab and a counter overhand left. Both Reed of them starting out strong, not holding back, throwing any punch. Both left. One, two, one, twos, one, twos, one, twos, one, twos. Oh. Oh, here comes Clint Woods with a comeback flurry of his own. Both Woods guys. some head movement. Oh, we got we to gotta stop us by the ref. What are we looking here? We have some sort of my oh. Shoe malfunction, uniform malfunction. This young fighter's going to get his shoe tied and we'll be back to the action momentarily. These young fighters came out swinging, ready to fight, didn't they? Are we expected to see almost 200 punches in the first round? So right on par with what we're looking for. Oh, both of them looking to land that straight hand. Quentin Woods. And Reed. Reed throwing a strong jab and a strong overhand in there. Both exchanging right hands and left hand straight shots. Wood shows a little bit more bounce. Reed appears to want to stand in, in the pocket a little bit more and throw shots. Yeah, I like the head movement that Woods has. Look at that, yes. Oh. Oh, what a good counter punch by Woods. Wood looks to be the aggressor. If he can, well, sorry, excuse me, Reed seems to be the, the aggressor. If he can keep Woods on his back foot, he seems to be having the better of the action when he does that. I like Woods' chances right now. He's patient. He's moving around, keeping his head on the swivel. He's not taking too many punches, even though, even though Reed is being the aggressor. And that's the end of the first round. With a very close round from Quentin Rhodes and Trident Reed. So if we're in a corner, what, what are we telling our, our, our youngsters right now? Of course, you're always going to tell the youngster to slow down and pace yourself. You're always going to tell them to pace yourself. That's the number one thing you always have to tell. So right here on our replay, uh, Jameer, what are we looking at right here? A timeout by the ref. Uh, let's talk about some of these shots being landed. You see the head movement right there. That's what I'm talking about by Woods. He's not taking too many punches, even though Reed is throwing. Look. Back step, counter. That's the counter I was telling you about. So the head movement is going to keep him in the game. So going to keep him in the fight. So Woods appears to have mastery footwork here, uh, and Reed seems to be the aggressor. Uh, what are we looking to see after we've seen him warm up in the first round a little bit, getting ready for round two? Uh, one, Woods has to stay away from the strong right that Reed is throwing. Start of round two. That, that right jab that Woods is throwing in with a follow left, Woods... Woods has to stay away from. Keep the head movement just like that. Oh, go. These young men are going. Good they won't stop. Of punches. They're exchanging punches Woods like there's no Reed. tomorrow. What are we seeing here when we watch amateurs just well away at each other right now? Uh, and, and the lack of defense, is, is, is it the lack of punching power? How are the... Refer how are the judges seeing this and how are they scoring this? And how can we make heads and tails of this at home? You can see there's no room for feeling each other out. These fighters are coming in looking to end their opponent early. So I don't think any of them are actually looking to win on the scorecard right now. They're trying to get their opponent out of the ring early and go. Quentin Woods seems to just be stepping around to try to read. But try to read, it, it appears to be standing his ground. And when he can be the aggressor and step forward, he appears to have the advantage. But if Woods puts him on the back foot, he can step around and honestly use his angles and his master footwork to dominate the fight. Would you say that uh, Woods or 
Reed would need to establish their jab more. I would say that Woods definitely would need to establish a little more of a jab to keep Reed more at bay and keep him guessing. Right now, you're seeing a lot of counter-punching coming from Quentin Woods. A lot of counter-punching. And it's not bad because the head movement, like I said before, is keeping him in this fight. If he were to stand there and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Reed right now, It looks like Reed has the power advantage over Woods right now, was what I'm guessing. This is why Woods is being more elusive. I like a Reed's chances countering, standing tall in the pocket if he can push Woods back. Uh, Woods is using angles and counter punching, stepping with that straight left hand. I'm wondering if uh, Woods' southpaw stance is giving Reed any trouble. Um, I wonder how many reeds, how many southpaws Reed has actually faced. Uh, only nine years old in the gym. So, start at round three. And that overhand left seems to be connecting and being the dominant punch of the first and second round and also coming in with connection right here to start of the third. But Reed is still game with one, two counter shots. Reed has been standing tall and strong, delivering confident jabs and overhands this whole fight. All three rounds, you have seen Reed throwing the confident jab. And there's that footwork again. We've seen so much from Mr. Woods he, as he steps around and just gives himself some space and allows him to set himself up. But he stood there in the pocket, and he ate a right hand right down the middle. Don't want to be standing in front of Reed. That's that's his go. Oh, that's his game. Oh, a good left hand by Reed. These fighters are tying up now. And it appears that Reed has changed to a southpaw stance and it and, and has more success with the straight oh. right hand than he did with oh, the straight that was left. A flush punch right down the middle. A nice uppercut by Reed. If I was the judges, I'm going to actually score this in Reed's favor right now. The end of round three. He seems to be landing more effective punches. <laughs> Extremely well fought contest between Quentin Woods and Trident Reed. We will go to the scorecards and we will see who the judges decide has earned the win. And as we look at some highlights from the fight, Quentin Reed, Quentin Woods, just seemingly taking shots that last round. Trident Reed, able to land a straight left hand over and over. Um, so who do we like, Jameer, in this fight? I, I gave you my I'm taking, I'm taking Reed out of Beatty. Reed out of Beatty would have been my pick if I was judging the scorecard. I would have scored him two to one on that. Like you said, Woods had more effectiveness in that last round switching to a southpaw stance. But for the most part of the fight, I would say Reed controlled. He landed the more effective punches. Even though you've seen a lot of counter punches coming from Woods, way in Woods' direction, I would say the more effective punches came from Reed's corner. I, 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 would, I would agree with that analysis, but you know we have seen wackier things. Um, I, I believe Reed earned the decision. I believe he took the last two rounds in, in round three somewhat convincingly. Let's go up to the announcer. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? I know how to score my card. That was a two to one fight. Young Wood seems to be hurt right now, but it all is great sportsmanship. We all game here to show love to these young fighters and this young belt. 
Mr. Quentin Woods disappointed with the decision, but Trident Reed definitely earned that belt tonight, um, dominating the third round handily. On to our second fight, and this should be a really good one. Tareen Graves from Indy, age 25, 165 pounds. He has oh, one like fight under his belt against Omar Bay from the Douglas Gym. He is 22 years old, 161 pounds, and he also has one fight under his belt. We are on to some amateur right. adults. Last second instructions from the referee, and we are almost momentarily underway for our second bout of the evening. Yes, this is how you put a card together. You start out with the babies, and then you come on with these adults right here, 20 age, 25 age, 22, both one fight apiece with a four-pound difference, 165 and 161 with the advantage going in Graves Corner out of Indiana. I, I'm, I'm going to reserve my judgment. The, the after, weight advantage. Weight advantage is Tareen Graves. It looks Age like advantage is Tareen Graves. He seems to be a little bit more of a developed fighter than Omar Ba, but we will see. Omar Ba seems to have the height. Oh, coming out with a stiff jab, Ba. Oh, yes. Get straight to the action. Once again, these fighters have no room of filling each other out. Bob with a straight, straight one, two. And able to slightly connect with that overhand right. Bob's looking really to establish that left hand. He's looking to uh, step around and maybe throw a counter jab and uh, pop with the left. Just uh, keeping the fight in the middle of the ring, both fighters. Bob seems to be the more technically sound fighter right now his defense is a little tighter his offense seems to be a little bit more fluid yeah it seems like they've slowed down since coming out and throwing at least 20 punches a piece bob, bob with an overhand left. right and a straight left jab really dominating this opening round showing to be landing the clean cleaner effective more punches and we have a tie up here. So we are halfway through the first round. And what are we seeing from Tareen Greaves? And what does he need to do to um, put a little bit more pressure on Omar Ba? Because Omar Ba seems to be having his way establishing his jab, uh, a lead uppercut, and a straight right hand that just is um, very, very accurate. It seems Graves has to fight more on the inside. It seems like he's staying on the outside, and that seems to be more of Omar Ba's game. Like I said before, Omar Ba seems to have at least a couple inches on Graves, seems like, here in this fight. So I would expect Graves to try to get inside more, try to get Ba's back against the ropes, try to back him into a corner, but really put some pressure on him. You don't want to stay too far at his range. So, so... Honestly, he needs to be all the way out of range or he needs to be all the way in range. What, what we're looking at is Graves is basically standing in no man's land on the end of the punches of Ba and gets clapped with a strike right hand right down the middle as we speak. And he's so not, He's not being aggressive enough. We need to see aggression out of Graves. If Graves wants to win this fight, he's going to have to be aggressive against Ba. A little uh, ego romit going on at the end of the round. Here we are looking at some highlights. A good left. Uh, I, left to oh, the body. 
Omar oh. Bach uh, completely dominated Crazy the position. first round. Um, he couldn't miss with the jab, with that overhand right as we see right there. And Graves is just not moving his head. He's just staying on the line, and he's just a, a, a target. So uh, hopefully we can uh, he can get more aggressive this round because Graves is definitely going to have to step it up on the aggression side and get out of no man's land. If Bob's corner can see what's going on right now, I would tell Bob to put together more effective combinations. Graves is just standing there open and ready to take these combinations. He can get him he can get him going early. He, he has can, his guard down. Can I ask you, Mr. Mayor, did fight. Boss show you enough that he could possibly be able to get Graves out of there? In combination, yes. Bob Graves back hasn't shown enough aggression for me. Bob back on the stick jab. Hits him with a straight right go. hand as he's coming in. And, and see, that's Grace charging in with his hands down and not leading with the jab, and he got clipped with a straight right hand again. It's the wrong type of aggression. You need to be poised. You need to counter and get inside. Simple tie-up. Lost his glove. Time by the ref. We have a, a wardrobe malfunction. This... Broadcast is brought to you by Yamo Sports. And as we can see, this replay is a nice right hand overhand that can't miss Baba. And he's been landing this over and over again. Clean flush shot. Um, and, that and that's mean right hand shot. And that's Graves just charging in with reckless abandon and not following his jab. So let's back, get back to the live action in here. And we are looking at Ba, and he's still leading, throwing the lead right hand and following with the jab. That's a combination of confidence. Graves is going to have to land some more punches if he wants to be anywhere in this fight. Right now, this is going Ba's way. Ba, ha, 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 all the way to the bank because that right hand is money. That it is. Just a little posturing. Boss seems to be measuring right now. Um, Graves has yet to figure out the combination what is the defense of Ba. So as we come to the end of the second round, we're just looking at Ba step around and pretty much have his way with Graves headed into the third. It seems like Ba doesn't have to play too much defense because He's staying at his distance, and he's getting off the punches that he needs to control this fight. Right now, Boss controlling the complete tempo and pace of this fight. And, 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 and Graves has to get close but not fall in and smother his shots. As we seen earlier, he threw a couple shots and got close, but then he fell in and got smothered, and then he stands in no man's land and gets clipped with a right hand. Graves and gets has clipped to with another that one. punch. He's not slipping it. Oh, and Bahaha with another money shot. That right hand cannot miss. Omar Bob with a mean overhand. That overhand has been effective in these past two rounds. Ooh. And that is the end of the second round. I think Omar, Omar Bob just tried to end his opponent with that last punch there to end the round. Well, didn't it, it? It, that's a shot that you know that you've dominated the round. Uh, you know you have it won easily, and now we are looking to finish tonight. So here on the replay, we show Ba just absolutely dominating the third, the second round. Uh, his jab has really been a great, effective tool, but it's the right hand that has just been dominating and cannot miss. It has been a straight flush shot. Uh, Graves has been unable to see it, is. and yeah, I, I just don't know. Two back to back. That right hand has been lethal. So Graves is definitely going to need a knockdown, if not a knockout, to win this fight. I have ball up two rounds of nothing coming out. Mm. 
And, and there just goes missing that, that haymaker at the oh. end of round two. Jameer, what are we looking to see from Graves if he wants to make anything happen this third round? This third round of Graves even wants to have a fighting chance at getting that belt and taking it home with his corner. I'm going to need him. I'm going to need to see him land combinations. I'm going to need to see him slip more of Boz's punches. He's going to have to completely control and dominate this third round with a performance that we have yet to see out of him. So, Grave taking in a couple body shots, spits out the mouthpiece. So, uh, he's really struggling right now. Bob appears to be the better fighter from the outside and also the better fighter on the inside. So, in a situation like that, Jameer, as an amateur fighter, what do you do when a guy is better than you on the inside and outside? Well, uh, I was never one to admit that a guy was better than me, so I just go in with a better game plan. And when A doesn't work, you always got to work it all the way through the C. Well, if, if you feel like a guy is better than you on the inside and also the outside, you got to make it rough. You got to make it tough. You got to make him uncomfortable. You got to back him up. And you got to make him work a lot harder than Graves is making Bob work right now. And that's what because I said earlier in the fight, Taj. You have to, you have to put the pressure on Bob. You have to put his back against the ropes. You have to get him in the corner. You have to slip that first jab of his and get inside. Chop the tree down. Body shots. You have to have the better game plan. And, and we're not seeing, and, and I don't believe that Taron Teron Gray had, doesn't have a game plan. I just doesn't believe that he's executing the game plan to his coaches and trainers ability that they want to see from him because well, they obviously know that he needs to be on the inside and rough up ball, but he just is unable to get there falling well, in and not following in behind his jab as he should. Well, honestly, Todd, I, I don't think that he can. He's not shown me anything that I can say that he can put that performance together. That Was that an effective body punch from Graves? Did Ba feel that, or was that just something? No, Ba felt. There we go. I like the head movement from Graves. The head movement just kept him, <laughs> kept him in this fight. A I for sure thought he was going to go down right there off of one of those punches. I just knew one was going to connect. And still by at the end of the third, still throwing in combinations, and Graves still unable. One punch falling in, and that is the end of the round. So and that what fight we is see, over. What, what we see from Graves in, 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 a, in a very dominating performance from Omar Ba. And once again, you know, I'm going to say Ba was my favorite in this fight. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to say Ball had easily won this in dominating fashion, three rounds to none. Yeah, I, I don't see Graves winning that one round of this fight. He, he, and as we see on the replay, Ball was able to just basically dominate, and that was maybe the best shot from Tareen Graves in the match, that overhand right at the third. But it was just too little, too late too far apart from any significant shots that Graves could land, and Bob really dominated the fight with his jab, um, without a doubt. And that overhand right was just something that couldn't miss. And every time, he just made Graves pay. Honestly, I, I wasn't too impressed by Graves' by Graves' fight. I wasn't too impressed by his game. And, and, Bob, I, and I, I don't know if, if it was more of Graves looking bad or was it Bob making Graves look bad? It looks like Graves is winded and tired if you ask me. It doesn't look like he could last too many more rounds in that fight. And if that Omar, fight would have went any other way, I personally would have had to get a petition going in Bob's favor. Well, it's not as if I've not seen worse in boxing. I am just pleased that what we are witnessing is 
what we are seeing. He wasn't ready. So, he wasn't ready to be here. As you can see, a combination by Bar as he's finishing up Graves. And we get ready for our third fight of the evening. Miguel Cordona here from Douglas against Takeo Takayo from Johns. I had the pleasure of speaking with Mr. Cardona's father earlier. He was so excited about his son fighting. So uh, looking forward to this fight. Taikio. And Mr. Takio Taikio from Johns. I'm expecting this to be a very technical fight, and neither of these young fighters pulling back on any of their punches. I expect to see a flurry of speed coming from both fighters. We are both looking at age, age 11. 11 and 10. Both 75 pounds, and both uh, have some amateur experience with five fights out of the red corner and eight fights out of the blue corner. And there's a bill for round one. And Cardona seems to snap a right hand that snap box to Kale's neck. In that first measure, oh. it looks like Cordona has a little bit more pop, I would say, than Taikeo. So, uh, Taikeo better be careful in that ring. Taikeo was very confident in those punches, Todd. I, I might need you to look again. Those punches Taikeo were throwing are very precise. He is timing them. They look very timed and precise, like he knows what he's doing. Cordona is really popping that jab. Very, very nice on the inside and the outside. Not letting uh, Takayo set his feet as much as he would like to. Counter punch as much as he would like to. And you know, uh, this is less blaze fist of fist of cuts of fury that we've seen from the age nine-year-olds. They seem to be a little bit more tempered and a little bit more measured right now. It's a nice jab by Cordona. It's a nice jab, really controlling range, really controlling itself. He looks really comfortable. That's a nice jab by Cordona again, just really measuring to Kyle this round. And I know you like to Kyle's counter punching earlier on in that round. Yes, I But did. I really like Cordona and his jab that it kind of dominated the uh, round for me. I, w I will say that Cordona probably did win that first that first round there, that jab was very strong. It was very effective. It, it, like you said, it kept Taikeo a little at bay. But at the same time, I like the pace that Taikeo is coming with right now. He's not forcing anything. And he also has a nice counter. And once again, nice head movement, like we seen earlier from Woods earlier in the, in the night. I like it. And there's uh, Mr. Cardona I spoke with earlier giving his son some coaching and some last-minute instructions. And then we see the blue corner, Taikeo's corner, also coaching him up, telling him what they might want to see from him. Um, maybe let Cardona reach a little bit more. And if I'm Cardona's corner, I'm saying continue to establish the jab. And there's Cardona coming out, popping that jab, and a straight right hand right behind it. But Takeo seems to counter with an overhand right and steps down and hits with a nice quick left hand. And now we got some action heating up here in the early second quarter, in the second round. Cordona seems to be popping that jab, but an overhand right is from Takeo was really timing that punch this second round. And a left hook to connect on the way out. Cordona, four-punch combination, didn't land any right there. Takeo able to land a one-two and push him back, Cordona. And then another one-two from Takeo, able to push Cordona back some more. Cordona back with a strong jab. I'm telling you, I like the way Takeo looks in there. He is very confident. He's very poised. 
Both fighters exchanging jabs. Oh. That's a left, tight left hook by Takeo that lands. Beautiful left hook by Takeo. Cardona establishing that jab, though. That's still the punch of the fight. That's still the punch of the fight. Cardona's jab has been strong. Oh, a right hook that rocks Takeo at the end of the round. And they go to round three with a very, very close fight in round two. That can go either way. Well, y'all, look at some of these highlights. As we look at some of these highlights from the fight. Both fighters just posturing a little bit. Nice counter left hook by Takeo right there. Able to duck and slip around. Beautiful. Takeo looking very confident in his corner. As much as I like Takeo's poise and the pace he's throwing his punches at, I'm honestly going to have to score this card. 2-0 Cardona's way. His jab is really the fight that's really keeping this established. That has been the deciding factor of this fight in these past two rounds. But I expect Takeo to come out very strong in this last round and put on one, one mean performance. Both fighters exchanging flurries left and right in the middle of the field. In and the this, middle. Is this is exactly what I'm expecting to see out of Takeo. A lot of force, a lot of pressure. Takeo is coming into the third round showing a lot of pop and a lot of power behind his shots right now. Good counter left by Takeo. Oh. And Miguel's kind of getting away from his jab right now. He needs to get back on. Miguel Cardona needs to get back on that jab or he's going to watch Takeo take this round away from him easily. Can't jab and block at the same time, Todd. A great jab is great defense if you know how to use it. And once again, Ty Kale being the aggressor coming out in this third and final round. And also able to be the aggressor because he has the ability to establish his jab. He has come out throwing his jab this round. And oh, what a counter body shot right there from Ty Kale. Way to drop your head and throw to the body. A little sloppy here, trying to get free. If Taikeo would have put this performance on from the beginning of round two, this fight would be his. It's a nice counter right hand by Cordona over the top. Kind of sneaky. And that is the end of round three, and that is the end of our fight. And I like, I like Takeo Taikeo in that last round, but I just think Miguel Cordona done, has done more in the first two rounds to establish himself. It was that jab. That jab was, once again, the deciding factor of this fight. And Correct. And Takeo put on an uh, impressive performance in round three after I feel dropping the first two rounds, able to come back in round three and really dominate, but just a little bit too late. So... So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to score this 2-1 Cardona's way. I like that. I like 2-1 Cardona's way. But it could easily go to KO. Uh, we could uh, honestly, it was so close that second round, it could go either way. That, that Like you said, that jab, that jab. That jab kept to KO honest in those first two rounds. So his, his corner had no choice but to tell him and give it everything that he has. Yeah, I, I totally agree, Jameer. Um, Miguel Cardona really established himself early on and often. Taikeo oh. pulling off the upset that we did not see. I did Amazing. not see that one coming. So, thank you for joining us for this live broadcast. We will take a short, short 
intermission and check out this video from one of our legends, Mr. Gregory Dyer, and we will be back with our live broadcast in a minute. Uh, my name is Gregory Dyer. The true story, what got me into boxing, we used to hang around the recreation centers in the evenings when the, it was time for us to leave. I was 10 years old, and me and my buddy used to come back up when the older adults was there, and we would run through the center or keep getting kicked out by the director. And one night, she called, she caught us in the building, and she said, come, come here, come in the office. She said, look, you know you guys ain't supposed to be in here this time. She said, here, go on up to the fairgrounds and watch some boxing. They were Golden Glove tickets at Cooper Arena, and we lived in the Windsor Terrace. We took those tickets and ran from Windsor Recreation Center all the way up to, to the Cooper Arena on the fairgrounds. And that was on a Friday night. I was so amazed. And I used to go to the center every day, walk right by the boxing ring, playing basketball. You know, I used to tell, tell Dwight I was good at basketball, I could play. But walk right by the boxing ring. But when I got those tickets and went up to that Cooper Arena, I went down there, I seen all them empty seats down by the ring. I wiggled my way all the way down and just sit there. And came back the next night, went back to the center and asked for some tickets, she had them. Went back the next night, that Monday I was in the gym signing up for boxing. And uh, that was history after that. In Yamo Media, the Barracks Community Center here in Columbus, Ohio. We are at our fourth amateur fight with Anthony Williams fighting out of the red corner and Jonathan Smith fighting out of the blue corner. Um, very exciting fight. Williams has no amateur fights under his belt, and Smith has six amateur fights under his belt, which is an amazing feat right now, to say the least, because uh, Williams is 15 pounds lighter and Smith is 15 pounds heavier. So different weight classes, different ages. This ought to be a very interesting fight. Yes, I told you, this is the fight that I've been waiting to see. Only the yeah. fourth fight and, nice and I, the name's nice and early. And Williams' poise seems to be just absolutely amazing in the white right now. And just able to really just push uh, Jonathan Smith back. So. I'm just trying to uh, figure out why this is Williams' debut fight, and he looks amazing. He appe Williams appears to have the better pedigree over Smith right now, and he is just have establishing himself with the jab and, and basically anything he wants to do. Uh, joining me on the broadcast here is Jamel Marquay and Brian Johnson. And you guys go ahead and chime in and tell me what we're seeing here from Mr. Williams. Welcome, Brian. Yeah, how you doing? How you doing? I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Ow. So, Williams really establishing his jab and able to, oh, a straight oh, yeah. left hand that just landed flush. And it just I like the series of right that Williams just thrown there. Once again, Williams in the red, with the red yeah. glove. And we have Ooh, yeah. Smith, Smith's hurt. Smith's hurt. Oh, we got Jonathan Smith. Smith's, Smith's definitely hurt. Ohio. His legs look to seem like they have went from underneath him. I, I mean, Jelly. Yeah, he needed, he, needed, he needed to focus on his jab to keep him up off of him. You know, it, it, what, what stuns me is that the fighter that which you appear has the better pedigree is Williams, but he has no amateur fights. And Smith has six amateur fights and appears to be getting dominated oh, yeah, and clipped with a right hand. Not only that, but he is 13 years his senior and has 15 pounds on him right now. 15 I don't, I don't, I don't see Smith. Smith is <laughs> oh. might not make it that far. <laughs> Williams seems to be very confident. Did you see yeah. the stare down at the end of round one? Uh, I, you know what did I did you see, see. The stare down I, at the I, end I of round one. I seen a one. straight right hand that could not miss. And here we go. let's check the replay right yeah. here. Let's as, check the replay. As Williams established himself, oh. and he gets caught with a counter right hand, but at the same time, he is showing to be an amazing fighter and a defensive specialist as he throws the left straight ahead and is able to really make him pay for it. Oh, can we get a replay of that stare down? 
and just measuring him. Uh, it, Mr. Johnson, it's more, it's more, It's more like Smith, he got hit with that one shot, so now he don't really want to let his hands go like that. I don't know. You he, can't let them hands go like that. You let them well, hands go, he's going to go to the ground. Yeah, <laughs> this is the amateur, so you better let those hands go. He, he, it seems like he's oh, afraid no. to let his hands so go. So we are at the start the of round. place to hit the mat. You don't want to hit right. the mat before you go pro. You don't want to do that. You're correct. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about let those hands go. You don't want to hit the. You don't want to hit the mat. He need, He top. needs to focus on that jab to keep him up off of him. He almost went down in round one. We almost seen a knockdown early tonight. And and it appears that Williams' defense is superior to uh, Smith's yes. defense right now. Honestly, uh, he just keeps it tight. He keeps his hands up, and he's able to establish himself in a more technically sound manner. And it honestly looks like a guy with no amateur fights is outclassing think, a guy with six amateur fights. I think it is is more of Smith's having a problem with the southpaw. Ah, that's what it is. He. So you are, are is Smith not seeing southpaws in the gym, or or is it a combination of the southpaw and the speed hand speed? I don't think he's seeing southpaw in the gym because he keep running into that. Smith seems that, to be having a little bit better oh, round. You see, Williams yeah. with a good left uppercut hits Williams square in the chin. I mean, I'm sorry, hits Smith square in the chin. Williams, oh my goodness. Smith's having uh, uh, Smith uh, has definitely a, a problem with that left hook. He's running into that. That's how this is what I was telling you about. Williams is a part of that redeem team. Okay. So, and now, yep. So what are we looking at here? I mean, like, Williams is thoroughly dominating with the jab, with the right hand, with the left hand. He has superior footwork over Smith, and Smith is just basically following him around the ring. He has a, oh, oh we have had. a standing eight count right here right now. So we have our first knockdown officially of the night right here oh. with the standing eight count. And Williams is the one to deliver it from Smith, who is 15 pounds lighter than Smith. So it's really basically two weight classes lower and has no fights. And I would say what you're, and I would say what you're seeing is a prime example of what the Redeem team does and how they train their fighters. Very confident, very poison. They're going to put on a show. I can't hear you in here. You got to put on a show. So. I can only hear you. No, nobody can hear me. I can All right. Hear me. So on our replay here, as you can see, Williams just hits him with a check right hook and steps around and then hits him with a, as, as Smith opens up, hits him with a beautiful straight left hand and continues to hammer away with the left hook. He comes back with a jab, a great body shot, to, and just throwing an array of punches and combinations, able to push Smith back, really dominate, and do does whatever he wants. Stepping uh, around beautifully. I'm shot seeing. after shot, and here's another look at it. The I'm seeing down. Williams. Williams is Just definitely in the gym doing what he's supposed to do because I I know his trainer, and his style is exactly like his trainer. Mm. Sick with his style, Paul. So heading into the final round, we definitely Smith definitely will need a knockout to win this fight. If he doesn't get knocked out. Well, he's swinging. He, yeah, he's swinging now. He's letting, he's letting his hands go. William is being aggressive. Uh, excuse me. Smith, Smith is, is being, being aggressive. aggressive yeah. And he is letting his hands go what he needs to do if he wants any chance of winning this fight. But he better throw the jab. He better not run into that left hook. That's what he better not do. <laughs> I'm hoping to see him my first knockdown of the night. Oh, man. We we seen our first knockdown. Are we looking for a knockout? That oh, was an unofficial knockdown. But Smith with a nice jab to establish and knock Williams off his path, 
as you can see, Williams is very calculated in there. Yeah. Already putting oh, in shots. There you oh, go. There it goes. He's tipsy. He's done. There it goes. He's down. That's, that's what I was waiting to see. I knew Williams was going to do it. I knew he was going to do it. You couldn't tell me different, Todd. You couldn't tell me different, Brian. I told you. Right. I told you that Redeem team. They're nothing to play around with coming out of EBG. Smith is a see, appears to be clamoring and complaining to the ref that that was a low blow. The ref did not see it that way, and he called this the second knockdown of the fight in favor of Williams. So uh, Smith is going to have to do something desperately if he wants to even have a opportunity to even sniff a win in this fight. Like I can he is. Say I, I I see Smith running into this left hook in just a second. And we're all in anticipation. It's coming. Smith is fighting tough off the ropes, though. He is not going quietly. He is throwing that right hand with conviction. He is trying to maybe land that one money shot that will bring him back in the fight. He's doing good with keeping his guard up. He keeps that right hand up to cover his chin. He needed the ropes for stability. That's what was happening. Yeah. He definitely needed the ropes for stability. It appears that William just put this on cruise control for the rest of the fight. Uh, establishing two knockdowns in a three-round fight, amateur fight, and dominating all three rounds easily. Uh, no question that Williams. William definitely won that fight. Won that fight. Definite. Yeah. On a replay, we just show Williams basically just toying with him. Uh, now, did after, that, did after, that look like a low blow to you? That was, was after a body shot. A body shot. Body shot. You know, I, I know, I know. Williams wanted the low Hold blow. Up. No, 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 no. That was a shoulder. He went down from a shoulder. Uh, you know, what yeah, I, what I see right check there is out. I see somebody looking for the referee to bail them out. Definitely. I uh, agree. I, I, don't, I don't know if I've seen much there from any aspect to where that would constitute a foul. Oscar-worthy performance? Was that an Oscar-worthy performance to you? No, 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 no. <laughs> Oscar-worthy appointments normally get the point. <laughs> <laughs> want that belt. William said he got the belt. He's already raising his hand. Uh, yeah. And a rare. Finally, that red corner got a W. That, that red corner ain't had a W to hold. <laughs> So, what a fight right there. We witnessed our first knockdowns of the evening. Um, the next fighter's up. Christopher Hayes Jr. from this very arena, Bear Community Center, against Kamar Beckford. Both age 11. Hayes Jr. is 78 pounds. Yes, yes. Mike, 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 Mike. So Mike, Hayes Mike, Jr. Mike, is Mike, 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 maybe favored in this Mike. fight. He has 12 amateur fights against Kamar Beckford's one amateur fight. But we've seen stranger things. Beckford is a 12-pound weight advantage in this fight. Let's take it to our ring announcer. Last fight looked to be our first win out of the red corner all night. So Christopher Hayes is the hometown guy. This is his home gym. His home gym, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. So, of course, I'm expecting him to be the hometown favorite. So 
Uh, Kamar Beckford has uh, the odds stacked up against him. Becker, but Becker has the weight advantage, correct? He does. He is yeah. a 12-pound weight advantage. Okay. And both fighters seem to be moving really well in the ring. Footwork. Oh. And Beckford has a sneaky overhand oh, right. Oh. That Beckford's counter punches seem to be on point. And right now we're seeing both of these young boxers fill each other out. Throwing power behind the punches coming from Beckford out of the blue corner. Both fighters unlike, uh, appear unlike to the be last settling. fight, they let their hands go. Uh, unlike the last <laughs> fight, you can expect that when you you have young men in the ring fighting, Correct. that you can expect that they will be letting their hands go. Um, both of the both fighters seem to be getting their licks in right now. Uh, I, I like Beckford a little bit more. His defense seems to be a little bit tighter. He seems to have a, a, a little bit more technically sound skill set. Uh, I like what he's doing with his counter punching, um, dropping his oh, head, dipping. A big right hand. He looks Bobby. like he's looking for more accuracy with his punches. So that's the end of round one. And I would say the away team was able to dominate that first round off of clean, effective counter punching. Okay. I, I would have to agree with you there, Todd. I like the movement and the head, the, the head movement, the dips that Beckford was given out of that blue corner. Once again, I would like to say that the away team has the advantage here tonight. I don't. So in this replay here, we show uh, Beckford able to step around, drop that lead shoulder, and, and show feints, and able to get his opponent to do what he wants him to do. Um, Neither one able to really establish their jab right now. So a nice fill out round. And what are we looking to see here in round two? Round two. And we are at is about to turn out. Yeah, oh. See, there, yeah. Shot there. after shot after shot. He's, he's patient and more accurate. Becker is definitely more accurate. And, and, and you can definitely tell that Becker's weight difference, uh, he has felt Mr. Haynes' strength, and he feels like he can take Haynes' power. So Beckford's just standing in the pocket winging shots right now. His confidence is there. I like how poised that Becker is right now. It seems that he's standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with, 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 young, with Young Hayes, and he's delivering everything that he has right now with these punches. Oh, a nice step around. Nice straight right hand by Mr. Hayes. Uh, well, he's going to need more of that if he wants to establish himself oh. in this round. A but big he, overhand right and a left to the body by Becker. He continues to get countered over and over and over again. So what are we looking for from Mr. Hayes in this final Ooh, round? Another Hayes, right to the limit. I tell you now, with these younger fighters, they, they have to learn to be patient as far as energy. So what I see, I see Becker, he contained his energy throughout the first round. And he filled out Hayes. So now Hayes is not throwing as many as punches as you see. So I really see, I see Becker coming out on top of this fight. He's more patient. He looks like he has so definitely more training. And, and, and even in that sequence right there, that's a great shot by Hayes. But the fact that Becker is just in that pocket able to dip and slip up underneath shots yes, exactly. and able to move around and he just feels, he just seems and appears to be more confident in the pocket, more confident in his skill set. So I, I totally agree. Um, what do you look to see for this next round? Now we'll see if if Hayes can score a knockdown this round and get back in the fight on the scorecards, but 
Uh, as far as I see right now, uh, the hometown guy is down on the scorecards to the away fighter and the less experienced fighter also. I say that, and what I'm, what I'm expecting from Kamar Becker this round is to come out giving it everything he has. I'm actually expecting him to maybe grab a knockdown this round. That's a good right and a good left, a good combination by Becker. He's standing toe-to-toe -to -toe throwing a good series of punches. Counters, body shots. Beckford seems to be able to handle himself under fire. He is very, very confident content. in the yeah, pocket. Yeah, confident and content. He's, it, and, and he shows great poise under fire. Even when shots are being thrown at him, he's able to move his head, breathe, dip, and he understands what he wants to do. Does he want to throw the right hand over top, throw the hand to the body, throw the jab, throw, look, just able to just fight inside that pocket with good confidence and, and able to get his shots off He's when he needs control. to. He's in control. He's definitely in control. Make him miss, make him pay. And Becker putting on a confident third round here. I would like to say that he's controlled every round of this fight here so far. Hayes came out. He came out with the energy. He's dwindled down now, though. He's not. He's ready to get out of there. <laughs> and that's it. And that's it. You know, and here we are through the fifth fight of the definitely night. Good fight. Really good fight. We're going to kick it up to our announcer on the PA and, and get the officials. Uh, as we spoke earlier, uh, Beckford's ability just to stand in the pocket, establish his jab as Hayes walks in, duck, step around, throw a body shot, throw an uppercut. You can tell Beckford was really thinking in there. That one fight that Becker had, it did good for him. It really it, did. Yeah, definitely. That, that that prior fight that he had definitely worked with his confidence. So as we take the replay here, hey, Beckford's even showing a, a, a little shoulder roll defense that he has in there. So uh, definitely he will have something in store growing up later on. Taking home the belt for this bout. In the blue corner, the good sportsmanship shown by well Hayes. Definitely well deserved. Definitely well deserved. So, as we end that fight right Next there. Fighters, please enter the ring. We we're coming up on a halfway presentation. And please follow us, Yamo Media, Yamo Sports. Follow us on social media, TikTok, at Yamo On Air. We are currently live on YouTube as we speak. Yamo Media Columbus on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Yamo Media, and Facebook at Yamo Media. 614. Up next, we have Lindell Walton out of Douglas fighting Ricky Lasley out of Dayton. Both 15 years old. Walton is 138 pounds with 12 fights under his belt. And Ricky Lasley is age 15, 145 with seven fights under his belt. versus Lastly, Douglas versus Dayton. Both ages 15, roughly the same weight, roughly the same amount of amateur fights. Red versus blue, who's ready? We are halfway through the night, ladies and gentlemen. Moving right along. Oh, oh these fighters are... And Walton comes out, out and ready. Goes a double, triple jab. 
Uh, who is that, Douglas? We have two brawlers Douglas on our hands. I don't see too much technique himself. coming out of either one of them Douglas, here. Douglas better contain himself. He's going to lose that energy. Like I said, <laughs> that, that first round is a great round. I know some of you guys have never been in a phone booth, but we're looking at a phone booth fight right here. Definitely. On the dime. Once again, and these I, fighters I, looking to get each other out early. And I'm worried about Walton falling in like that and taking a shot. He's already shown a couple of times uh, to have shaky legs. So I, I don't know if this is going on three rounds. I'm going to say oh. this. I'm going to say Dalton is, is, is a little bit more patient and he's conserving his energy. Lastly is winging shots. I mean, lastly, is winging shots. Beautiful. And, and we're halfway through the first round, and they appear to be slowing down a little bit from the early activity, settling in. Lastly, is throwing that overhand left for daylight right now. People. Once He's again, that's Linnell in. Walton in the red corner and Ricky Lasley in the blue. Lastly, he's looking to get Walton out of here early. I agree with you. I definitely agree with you because Walton's energy is going. <laughs> Walton definitely has mm. the juice. That was a good left uppercut by, by Lasley. Listen, that left hand. Well, uh, who, uh, Warren has that juice for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's already starting to run out of gas yeah, there, as you can see. He's punching himself yeah, out. Yeah. He definitely he seems to be like he's punching himself out to me. So Warren comes out fast and, and hot and furious and, and appears to have been a little gas at the end of the first round. Let's see if Warren can sustain this high-level energy for the entire fight. And, and Ricky Lasley seems to be showing a lot of patience with that overhand left right now. Really just trying to uh, measure Walton coming in and is having uh, fairly good success at it. I agree. I'm ready to see what this second round holds for Walton. So right. Both fighters posturing a little bit. Lasley just, uh, just appears to just be a little bit more technically sound in the pocket and, and, and fights well a little bit better it appears inside and outside and the ref wants to have a conversation right before and he said watch the head but this is boxing it's not brawling there's no punches and not heads oh no we brawling we're brawling comes watch out the head, but. each round he comes out gassed up oh but a good right hand by lastly Another yeah. good combination by Lasley. Jameer, what are we seeing right now from your amateur experience? Lasley seems to have a, a certain quiet confidence about him in the ring, even though Walton is rushing to him. And that's exactly what you have to do when you have a fighter like Walton who's coming in, who's coming at you, rushing, throwing wild punches. It seems like he doesn't have that much technique. It's just, I want to punch and get my opponent out of here. So what you have to do is you have to be the more poised and advanced fighter here, and you have to get the more effective punches and land clean shots on time so you can get your opponent to feel those shots. So he's going to stop, as you can see, from earlier in the rounds. Juan's not throwing those crazy punches as he once was. So, Brian, what, what does Walton have to do to establish himself back in the fight? Because it seems like Lastly is just stepping around, dominating him with shots, and Walton is just walking into it. See, Walton, I, I'm feeling that Walton is looking for the point system. He's just throwing punches just to try to land. He, he feels that he can win off of points. However, those point, those punches aren't accurate. They're not even really getting in there, penetrating anything. He's just throwing punches. Um, so, to get him back in the game, <laughs> I don't know if he can really get back in the game. I, I, I really don't see that happening because I see that Lasley is definitely the more experienced fighter. Which, which would make it different because Hayes has 12 fights and Lasley has seven fights. So, uh, 
And that is the end of round two, where we have watched Lashley basically dominate that round. And I do like your assessment that Walton well, seems to be chasing points right now, yes, he's but he's not points. throwing enough accurate shots to actually uh, have that game plan be effective. And to Jameer's point, Lashley just looks like the superior fighter in there, superior craftsman in there, and it's basically just having his way. If you're the blue corner, what are you telling your corner right now, Jameer, coming into the final last round? Move your head, time your punches, and I would like to see more counter punching out of you because he's rushing you. He's walking right into you. He's giving you these shots. So all you have to do is time it. I can see, I can see him ending this with a clean uppercut or a clean hook easily to get to get Walton out of there. He's side wide step, open. Side step, side step all those punches. Wide he'll open. Get him, he'll get Walton up out of there. Because mm -hmm. if you see right now, Walton is straight forward. If he wide open step, with his head down. He's slide, if he side steps that, side step, go to his right. Right there. Yeah. Head down. Yeah, there goes he's, the running, he's running into everything. Come on, bow. And if you want to know what his corner said, what well, last... <laughs> hey, just give him all you got. He's up out of there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm expecting him to say, lastly, move your feet. Don't stand in front of this guy. And, and if I'm the corner of Walton, I say, Walton, you can't just run into this guy. He's expecting you to run in. If you run in and you establish that jab, you pop that jab, you can consistently tell Lasley where he needs to go. And you're not following, but literally dictating to Lasley. And if he can do that, he'll have a chance. But he doesn't appear to be able to have that skill set where he can force Lasley into mistakes right now. No, Lasley's showing that weight advantage. Walton has, he needs more footwork. That's what I'm seeing. That's where he's lacking. He's going straight forward. He had, his footwork isn't there. And as you can see, Lasley throwing punches to try to get Walton out of there. If I was him, I'd be tired of this guy throwing these wild punches at me right now, too. And it, it, there's another straight left hand that lands flush for Lasley. And a right. And a, a nice jab right in the face of Walton. We got a little tangle up and we're fighting a little bit. The ref warns Lasley again for him behind the head. But we're coming up to the close of the third and final round where it appears that Lasley has dominated from bell to bell. And there we hear it, the 10 second clapper. Oh. They throw punches and bunches, a lunging jab that just snaps back the head of oh. Walton to end the fight. And we are round fight six, halfway through. We are in the books with a dominating performance by Ricky Lasley from Dayton area. Yes, and that was a good final 10 now, seconds. I'm gonna say, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on with this blue corner, but this blue corner is, what, what is it? It's a six fight. Uh, so as Lasley comes out and wins this, let's say that blue corner is like, what is it? Five and one? Four Boy, fights. Oh, well, no, we don't, we don't know the results of the Lasley fight. We know right? the results oh, of the Lasley fight. I mean, we do know the we results. definitely know the results. I don't we even know, know why. The results of the Lasley fight. Hey, listen, if this didn't go to the blue corner. seats here, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't know the. Were we all watching the same fight? We all watching. The we same had fight. to be watching the same fight. I mean, you know, if I, if Lasley's not the winner, I'd be surprised. Just because you throw two hundred punches and land thirty doesn't mean you win. No, definite not. That's a definite but, not. But you know, it's always they might have gave you the fight off aggression, even though it's effective. Who was he, John Cena? Ruthless aggression. If he wins off aggression, there will be aggression in his corner. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, but no, nothing but respect to both of these young fighters. They have a long career ahead of them. Standing is both 15 years old, very young, so nothing but high hopes for both of them. Wish the best for both of these fighters. Definitely, And the definitely. blue corner has shown a perpetuance of dominance today, with the only loss in the blue corner is belonging to Jonathan Smith from Dayton. You know, baby, blue is royalty, you know what I'm saying? As the Crenshaw hoodie walks across and, the screen. 
we no, after definitely. this, we will be taking a short intermission, and we'll be looking at another Hall of Famer interview, Mr. Tim Bow, the legend. My name is Tim Bow. I box in the early 90s. Uh, I think I uh, started um, 92, I think, 91, 92. But when I used to come up for the summer, up on the south, when we used to come up for the summer, and I used to train at a Barrett Recreation Center with uh, uh, Mr. Ed Lee Williams. And I only did the summer and stuff like that. I didn't even get, get serious to about uh, 90, 92 when I actually got serious with it. I stayed in trouble. I was in everything. Anything is possible. I, I selling drugs in the streets, fighting. I was doing all kind of just badly wrongful stuff. And actually I got in a fight at a gym outside. I didn't know the gym was there. And that was uh, Powell Recreation, Powell's uh, uh, boxing lady was there. And the police came and maced me and this dude. And uh, I ran inside the uh, gym and washed my face off. And the coach King Brooking, that was my coach from then and now on, uh, uh, told me about boxing and what all I can do, what all he can do for me and stuff like that. I really didn't listen to him until he challenged me. When he challenged me, you know, you stick with it and I'll show you places that you'll never go and, all, and people you only see on TV, you would see me live, uh, 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 in live person. And uh, so I took the challenge in three months. I was in the ring. Proudest moment, uh, going to Olympic camp. Uh, that was very, very, very educational. That was very, woo, man, that was, uh, that was. And we are back in live action, the start of round at fight number seven. And we have Person Edwards versus Aaron Johnson. It'll be posted on Yamo Sports. On Yamo Sports. On Yamo Sports. 130 pounds. And right now, Edwards seems to be, out of the red corner, seems to be stabbing with the jab to try to establish himself. And Aaron Johnson, seven fights under his belt. Um, They're pretty much equal as far as experience. Very much so. Yes, it's pretty much equal in weight, too. Just a five pound differential going. Uh, Edwards way and appear to be uh, complimentary styles also this should make for an exciting fight both fighters seem to have confidence and nice hand speed oh great crown of right hand by Aaron Johnson right there oh my yeah this is definitely gonna be a good fight I'm very excited looking what Edward has to do Edwards is coming out of elite boxing gyms elite boxing gyms houses also houses the redeem team Edwards and Johnson, center of the ring. Edwards lands a nice jab and another nice jab. Backs Johnson up just a slight bit. Mm. Both guys using feints really well. Head shots really well. Oh, oh what a nice flurry of the body. Oh, Edwards. and Edwards, there we go. A nice left hand by Edwards. A nice left hand by Edwards. And it knocks Johnson's mouthpiece to the canvas. So early on in this fight, both guys appear to be technically sound. A slight advantage for Edwards uh, for his connect percentage right now, but both guys seem to really, really, really be vested in on that jab and try to establish himself. And there's Johnson again trying to throw that right hand that he landed earlier. And as you Tap can see, both of these fighters respect each other very much already early on fighting. And what at I, the end of one What round, I'm seeing is Edwards, Edwards definitely has a better defense to me for some reason. Um, he's definitely confident. So on our Check replay here, Check him out. both guys really using the feint really well, using hand speed really well. Both guys yeah. making each other miss, trying to make each other pay. But as you can see, as Brian mentioned earlier, defenses are really good. And Johnson sneaks in a nice straight right hand. And then another straight left right there. Edward shoots out to the body and then comes back with a nice jab to establish itself. Please join our live broadcast here on Yambo Sports, Yambo Media. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, Yambo Media. We are currently live on YouTube, Yambo Media Columbus. Please subscribe and like this broadcast. It started around two. 
Johnson comes out trying to establish a jab. Both fighters see, oh, amazing counter jab. Oh, and there Edwards. we go. Oh, they eat Edwards, yeah, yeah. Throwing yeah. the flurry yeah. of body they shots. right now. So, Jameer. Oh, and a clean over yeah. Edwards. Now, Edwards, oh. Now, unlike the last fight, these, these, these punches and bunches, these are actually landing. So, so, if, if, oh. Check Edwards out, yeah. Edwards, Edwards being the aggressor. Has Johnson's back in the corner right now. Just a flurry of shots from Edwards. Just able to just really dominate Johnson this second round, which we possibly did not see. They both seem to be on the same level. This is a matter of not skill, but. Oh, did you oh, see really? the head movement and dip both of those punches by Edwards? You know what they say, cream rises to the top. And whenever you are in competition with someone you think is just as skill level as you, that fighter that has that higher skill set, that higher wheel set, rises to will the rise to the top. And it appears that Edwards not only has a touch higher skill set, but also a higher wheel set. And he is going after the win right here. Ooh. Nice he had a check, leaping, uh, yeah, a leaping left hook. And Johnson teeing off, looking for that one shot, but Edwards is just too skilled of a defender to walk right into it. Edwards seems very confident in the combinations that he's definitely. throwing. I definitely agree with that. Edwards was really able to establish himself that yeah. round. Oh, uh, yeah, that jab was the dominating factor, able to really open up Johnson right there with that jab and sticking with that straight right hand. And then she shines to the body, landing a flurry of punches and combinations. So uh, one shot, two shots, three shots, or four shots, it does not matter. Edwards is pulling away as we speak. So. Going into this third round, what does Johnson need to do to get himself back into the fight? I, I really don't see him out of the fight just yet. Um, I mean, I feel like Johnson's still doing a good job. I don't know. I really, I, I feel like he's still doing a good job. Um, he's still, he's still punctual. It's more of, like you said, Edwards rising to the occasion. Combinations. Yeah. Key word is combinations. So, Jameer, you're saying Johnson needs to throw more combinations this round? He has to match Edwards' energy. Yes, I do. That's That sound matches energy. Starting the third. Oh, Good there it goes, like that. Same. Like that. He keep doing that. Just... Not leaping out there like that ain't gonna get. Ooh, 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 ooh. Good defense by Edwards. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and I'm not gonna say both of these fighters are really talented, but it's obvious that Edwards is, is has a class of head of Johnson right now. And not to say Johnson is not a skilled fighter, but it is obvious that Edwards is that class of fighter right now. Edwards is taking it to his uh, uh, Johnson's body. And, and that is causing Johnson to lose. Just, see, you know when he spit his mouthpiece out, he was looking for some he was looking for some air. But you don't have time for a breather with Edwards. He's not giving you that. This and, 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 and Edwards is showing us the difference between what we call a blue chip Oh go Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Is that a knockdown? There you go. Edwards, I told you. There you I'm go. Gonna, that's how you step on him. <laughs> I'm going to be I'm going to be very biased. This is what you're going to see and expect out of elite boxing gyms. Yeah. I tried to give you guys the warning at the beginning of this show. Uh, I'm looking for that. So Johnson is able to recover. From the body shot, I'm but looking for it to happen again. Yes. As we were saying, I expect it to happen again. He's hurt. Edwards is a class He's going down. above the rest, and he cannot miss with that straight Ten right Ten seconds. Hand. Watch him go down. 
He, yeah, Johnson's hurt. He's trying to talk himself back into the game. Okay. And that's the end of it. I like how Johnson was able to get back up yeah. and stay fighting, and he yeah. stayed aggressive. He, did. he didn't run from the he smoke. Did. He didn't expect to go down, though. It was su it's surprising. <laughs> Check him out. Body, body yeah, shot. Body shot. Is what really put him down. Yeah. Oh. And Ed was Ed was been at that body the whole fight. Yeah. It, that delay reaction body shot. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that is our punch of the night right there, ladies and so gentlemen. Far. So far. Oh, just did. It was two of them. It, just, it was two of them. Left and right. He right. said, hmm, hmm. That's just a beautiful shot, He couldn't do nothing but go down. Did you see a that? beautiful shot. There was nothing he could do but go down. Those body shots always get you a delayed reaction. Right. You, know? you can feel that two weeks from now. That's a big bruise. So what, made, what, what would have made me even more mad as a fighter is him stomping right next to me like that. That would have oh, made yeah, me want to get right. up and knock him out. You're right. Don't be stomping right next to me like that. With that body shot, I don't like care that. what your mind is saying. Your body going to tell. Gonna, <laughs> well, I'll shine your mind. <laughs> so a really good fight from both fighters. Uh, Johnson, nothing to be ashamed of. Really, no, great really good fight, fighter. Great fight. He great will fight. be around. As long as he stays in the gym and stay working hard, he will make a name for himself. And Pearson Edwards, I expect to hear this name in the future. Very, very well skilled fighter. Um, if he stays on this trajectory, I expect him to be a champion here. Once again, shout out to Elite Boxing Gems. As we wait for the ring announcer and the I'm judges just... to come up with the scorecards to figure out who is the winner of this fight, I would imagine Pearson Edwards with the knockdown right. in the third round. One more time, put your hands together for both fighters. I'm going to tell the amateur and professionals. Take it home the belt for this bout. Let's hear it. In the red corner, the Pearson Edwards. Pearson Edwards taking home the belt out of the red corner. Excellent. So, tell us about Elite Boxing. Elite Boxing Gems, once again, they're located on the east side of Columbus. Man, they have some of the most oh, understanding, wow. most skilled coaches and trainers that are in there from uh, Sigwood and Southall, from Quick to, um, it's so many of them in there. Um, Coach Reeves, who is a well-known. See what our PA announcer has to say, Scarry, Sergeant Mayor. National champion from right here in Columbus, Ohio. At only nine years old, he's already had 35 fights. Most recently winning the National Silver Gloves Championship in Independence, Missouri. He's also won two other national championships, one in Cleveland and one in Wichita, Kansas. And he is now preparing to go after his fourth national championship. Nine years old. I want you guys to show as much love as you can for Columbus, Ohio's own, the number one ranked fighter in his class, Mr. Antonio Johnson. That's how it be. He's like, man, I'm ready to sit down. <laughs> He's like, man, come on, man. Hey. Here we are, young man, in front of us taking pictures, ready to sit down. He's a tired young man. Jr. Mr. Johnson Jr., our champion, our amateur champion from here in Columbus, Ohio. 35 and 0. Oh. Representing the All city right. of Columbus. 35 and 0. 35 and 0. Chasing his fourth national title. Man, do he, he doesn't fight tonight? Nope. He might as well be professional. 
What's, hold up. What's this? Oh, I gotta find. I gotta. We gotta find him. We gotta look him up. Please follow us on social media: TikTok at Yamo on Air, Instagram at Yamo Media, Twitter at Yamo Media, Facebook at Yamo Media six one four, and join us for our live program broadcast on YouTube, Yamo Media Columbus. Yamo, Yamo, Yamo. What a night of action, ladies and gentlemen, we have here. Yamo Sports is putting it on in a tremendous fashion with a number of amazing fights in lineup. If you are looking for a job in media, please reach out to Yamo Sports. So, I'm very excited for this fight next fight coming up. Very excited. Another elite boxing gym member coming out of here. Michael Morris, age 26, 132 pounds, with three fights under his belt coming out of the blue corner, coming up against Devontae Gersom, age 25, 132 pounds, with five fights under his belt. This should be an interesting fight. Uh, these elite boxers have shown to be very elite. Very as elite. As we see from Mr. Williams here. Uh, also part of that pedigree, uh, elite boxing redeem team is also a part of that pedigree. So all training in the same gym. More of that redeem team here again, once again. Our last winner, Ooh, Pearson man, Edwards. In the red corner, put your hands together for Mr. Devontae Gershon. Devontae Gershon. And in the blue corner, representing DBG, out of Columbus, Ohio, put your hands together for Mr. Michael Morris. Michael Morris. Michael Morris. Okay, he was, he's with Elite. So, so. What are, we, what are we expecting to see from these guys right now, dude? Five fights for, what is it, Gorson. Three fights for Morris. You know what I'm expecting to see, Todd. Once again, we got elite boxing gyms coming here to show once again why they are one of the top boxing uh, 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 commutes in the city. So you see Morris walking away from with this? I'm going to go with Elite Boxing. I'm going to go with EBG every time they touch the ring. You can't ask me that. I'm very biased in this one. I agree with you. I'm all with, I'm with Elite, too, you know. Uh, and, you know, and it's all right because you guys have history in the city, so you guys can be Elite. I have to look at this from an unbiased perspective, okay? Um, I'm looking to uh, – but what I've seen is that uh, EBG has Elite Boxing and the Redeem team have shown a perpetual seat for winning. So – with that being said, um, <laughs> I do like their training. I do like what I've seen from all their fighters tonight here. So I'm looking for uh, maybe Morris to establish himself. But don't write off Gershon because we have not seen anyone from uh, the Andre Cray gym yet. So let's just see what they're about. And Gershon definitely has more fights. He has, what, two more fights than uh, Morris? No, thank you, sir. And we are underway with round one, and Morris comes out, and he's looking to walk him down and basically establish his jab right now. He's using, oh, Morris is swinging for the fences out the gate. He's trying oh, to yeah, end this. Yeah. And Gershon's not going Morris, for it. He will not be a blow. Oh, oh, Morris is definitely aggressive. He will not be a blow. And Gershon. Seems to have pretty good footwork and able to move in there. He's able to think his way through the fight a there little bit. There we go. Back don't against get the, caught in the corner. And as he gets caught in the corner, Morris just wails away on him. Morris has the confidence right now. I think Gerson needs to let his hands go to so Morris can feel his power to slow him down some. Oh, and because he a, doesn't believe in his power right now. And that appears to be something right there. He hits him with a nice right hand, and Morris for momentarily is not throwing any punches, and Ooh, he hit him with another right hand. It was a he stiff caught one. Morris with that a straight was a right. stiff right. And Morris yeah. needs a pair to buckle there. Buckle. Yeah, that was definitely a buckle. Oh. Another right hand. Uh, and Gershon is establishing himself now. 
as Morris is just walking went walking in and abandoning any defense. It just appears that he's just going to try to run over Gerson. And Gerson now remember will have none of that. Now I remember like I said that he needed to throw them punches to let his hands go so he could feel his power. Morris could feel his power. That changed the whole tempo of the fight. Now watch now look at the fight. <laughs> the fight is totally different than it started. Morris is no longer has that religious yeah. aggression, <laughs> felt that straight right hand, and now he's less yeah. likely to just run in. I'm still expecting Morris to pick back up on his pace and aggression. Um, you know, from what I'm seeing, I believe Morris will pick it up. However, I think that Gerson is going to land another shot that's going to slow him down. Little tie up. Over aggressive by Morris, and he ends up wrapped around Gershon a little bit. But I, I, I like the poise of Gershon. He showed that he could weather the storm early, cracked him with a couple straight right hands, and, and basically took his respect for Morris and said, you will not come in here and walk over me. And I think Gershon took round one. No, no, no. Morris definitely took round one. He landed the more clean and effective punches just because Gershon got off a couple here and there. I don't know. Morris I, controls I, I like, that I round. I like the fact that Gershon hurt him this round. It was definitely a buckle. I mean, Gershon definitely landed the cleaner shots, though. He he had Morris hurt. He, he literally buckled his legs. So, uh for a minute there, we thought this was early on in the fight where yeah, we see Morris really dominate the first minute or so with flurries, and then Gershon Got comes hit. back and gets his respect right there Here with a comes. straight right hand. And let's see if we see the one that actually does real work and will hurt Morris here. He told right him to, there. He told him to buckle up. Put your seatbelt on. <laughs> so I, I like Gershon to have taken that first round and, and dominate. It, now, the elite boxing has showed a perpetuation of dominating, so let's see if we can get back to dominating. And Morris is trying to establish his jab right out the gate. See, boxing is a game of chess. And I'm watching Gerson. You know, I, I, I see him as the underdog just starting out. However, you see him think, as the favorite. Yeah. Because he's a thinker in he's there. He's a thinker. He's he, definitely thinking. He's, he's able to move around, and he's, he's really just out thinking Morris right now, out maneuvering him, and, and, and just out pointing him. It's like Gershon has seen Morris in the gym before. You know what I mean? Right, he yeah. has definitely seen Morris in the gym, and he's used to fighting these type of aggressive fighters. And He's utilizing Gerson, his patience. Gershon just seems right at home in the pocket right now. I need Morris to there move his Morris. feet more. Morris needs to move his feet and let his hands fly like he was when he first started when out. When he first started out, it was that punch. That punch made him question it, whether to let them go like that. Oh, oh. There you go. Two oh. straight shots from Gershon. Really driving Morris back into the ropes, and 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 and, and I, I I don't know what I'm looking at, but it appears that Gershon is is, is somewhat taking Morris's wheel. I, I believe Morris thought he was going to run over Gershon, oh. and and Gershon is simply taking his wheel now. That was a strong right hand by Gershon. Morris trying to pitch around the ring here. Oh, straight right hand from Morris to really on, huh? opens up Gershon. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, when you got him, you oh, got him. You got to keep Morris going. Morris overhand right hook. You got to keep him over there, Morris. And this is where Gershon does not want to be. Morris, the aggressor, would love to keep him on the ropes all night. And Gershon does not need to be on the ropes. Get your back off the ropes, get back to the center of the ring, get back to establishing your jab and stepping around and dominating this fight from the middle of the ring. I the think, pace team had, I, the I pace think we seen the most from Gerson. I think we done seen the most. I, I don't really see him coming back up out of there, man. I had hope. 
You can see the pace slowdown from both of these fighters here in that second round. What I'm expecting out of this third round is for them to bring some excitement back to this fight because they almost made me go to sleep with that last round. I agree. Tell me who's going down. Somebody got to go down this round. Who's going down? I, I, I don't believe. I see Gershon taking the knee. I don't believe. See him I'm, still, the I'm knee. still going with elite. I'm still I, going with elite. I don't believe anybody's taking a knee. I, I don't see where uh, uh, Morris has showed the pop or the ability to sit on his punches long enough to get Gershon out of there. And as you can see, Gershon's coach is telling him to throw that jab and pop it. I see them starting out real heavy for this round. Coach Cox talking to Morris in his corner. Seconds out, we're getting ready for the final and third round of our ninth of our eighth fight of the night. And we are almost to the end, people. And Morris very aggressive, stepping to him, stepping to Gershon. We have a little time on the ropes, and now we're back to the center of the ring. And Gershon, one, two, one, one. Popping that double jab out there. Double jab, hook to the body. Gershon scores. It seems like every and time it, Morris feels like it's going to be easy, Gershon comes back with something to let him know it's going to be more of a challenge. And I got to tell you, I, I believe Gershon has found something um, forcing Morris on his back foot. And, and Morris appears not to be able to fight off his back foot. He can only fight going forward. So, and right now, Morris is coming forward, but he's not putting, like, any pressure on. He has to really force the, me the issue with that jab. He's just following Gershon around the ring as we speak. At this point, I don't know if he's able to put the pressure on, like, 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 like we established earlier in this fight. When he got hit by that overhand and his legs broken, I think it took all the confidence away from him. I agree with you. And I would not be surprised if Gershon walks away with this fight over technicality. And that will be a hard breaker. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm sure that Morris feels like he has this in the bag. I don't know how he could, though. In a second. If knockdown, he'll get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. If he creates a knockdown, if he scores a knockdown, he has this fight in the bag. He has to, he has to stun, he has to stun Gershon back for me to be sold. I mean, did, if I he mean, doesn't stun Gershon, I'm not sold. Is, 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 did, did Gershon win the second round? Yes. So, so definitely we need at least a knockdown or a knockout to at least call it a tie. Fighters seem to be tired or fatigued at this point. Both Seems fighters. like they've punched themselves out. Gerson has to turn it up. You got him in the corner. You got, oh, that was a good body shot. Gerson is showing the ability to, to push Morris back right now and Mm. Uh, a good left hook guy. by Morris. Another oh. good left hook by Morris. A strong, a strong Morris combination put together Morris by Morris. To... I don't know. That last yeah, combination could have. Yeah. That last combination could have finished it. I mean, it was the icing on the cake with that last. I, I, I could agree that Morris, that that last. He was kind of stunned. I don't think y'all see what I see. He was kind of stunned. He leans to the side just a little bit. He did, yeah, he did. He did a little lean, little, little. But Gershon's ability to look at the look at the head movement that did making him miss, making him pay. But I don't know if Morris did enough to make him pay in the end. He definitely established himself at the end of that last round. But yeah, I don't know if it was yeah. enough. I don't know if that if that is. It's a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure in that ring. Yeah. That ring. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, if, if you are the pressure fighter and you are being pushed back, you know what I mean, that could lead to some holes in your game. And that's what appears. You're a pressure fighter, and someone oh, appears to want to pressure you. The only way is to step around and dig. Panda, 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 panda. Yes, I think it was the fighter with the black shorts on that one. Take it home in the belt. Okay, text me. Okay. In the blue corner, push your hands together. 
the blue corner. Oh, yep. Once again, elite boxing gyms walking away with the belt. I don't think they. I don't think anybody from their gyms has lost a fight tonight. They're That's giving them the blues. <laughs> Wow, what an interesting call after the end of the night. So we will go to a short intermission, and we will be back here shortly at our live broadcast brought to you by Yamo Media. I'm Tom McClendon here with Jamar McQuay and Brian Johnson on the call. Hello, I am Annie J. Ross Womack, the Executive Director of the Ohio Sickle Cell and Health Association. And I'm here to talk to the parents and student athletes about a very important topic. The NCAA has instituted different standards for all divisions of student athletes. Before you can play sports in any college or university, you must present a negative trait status or hemoglobin status documentation. Your hemoglobin status is taken at birth with the newborn screening. And what they do is they run your blood for any abnormality or any birth defect. There are thousands of newborn screening birth defects in this country. For more information about sickle cell disease, sickle cell trait testing, you can call our offices at 614-228-0157. Or you can visit us via web at ohiosicklecell.org. Welcome back to the broadcast. I am Tom Holland here live from the Barrett Community Center here in Columbus, Ohio. This broadcast is brought to you by Yamo Media Productions and Yamo Sports. We are here live, and we are on our ninth fight of amateur of our Legends Night here. And we are watching Samuel, AKA, from the Douglas Gym fighting Lennox Torres from Dayton. So, both 17 years old, 138 pounds for Samuel, 131 pounds for Torres. And Samuel, this is his first fight? His first fight ever. Okay. So we will see what he has established here at the uh, Douglas Fighting Gym. He might just be a natural. And we do see a ton of fisticuffs being blown, thrown right now. By and Lennox Torres. Torres is taking full advantage of his experience, having been in the ring previous times, knowing that Samuel has never been in the ring. Torres is looking to be the aggressor and take the fight right to Samuels, and it is working tremendously right now. Samuels, it, he doesn't have any and confidence now right now. And now we're a standing eight count from Torres because he is just able to basically maul Samuel all around the ring. Back to the action, and Torres is right back to where he started. Establishing his jab. And applying nothing but pressure. Nothing but pressure. And and honestly, if, if Samuel had just a tad more experience, I, I believe he could make Torres pay for reaching because there are some shots where Torres is reaching and, and obviously leaving himself wide open for countermeasures. I think it's more of Samuel isn't confident just yet. This is his first fight. He's still dealing with a little nervousness and those things. So he's afraid right now to let his hands go. He might have a little bit more skill than he's showing. This is possible. And, and you always get that nervous energy because he appears to have long, lengthy range. He definitely has the reach. So I, I do like his skill set. Um, he will have to establish himself come the second round. And the third round after taking after scoring the knockdown in the first but he's fighting back and he lands a straight right hand to really open up Torres right now but Torres has he pinned up against the ropes and he is back to work back where he started earlier when he scored the knockdown and that is the end of round one good round good round good round and thank you round you see a lot of Torres was uh Show great aggression early on in the round. He was able to score eight eight count knockdown. But you see, just right there, just right there. Stiff straight right hand by Samuel shows his ability to reach out and touch someone. Okay, on the replay, we just show him as he beats. 
Samuel up against the ropes and just starts winging shots. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Nice. That replay brought to you by Yamo Sports. And we are at the beginning of round two here. Round two underway. And uh, Torres is looking for more of the same, maybe scoring another knockdown here in the second round. I and see Samuel, Samuel doing a little bit more this round. He, he done got a, uh, the nervousness, I believe, mm. that's, that's out of there. Good left by Torres. Yeah. And it's obvious that Samuel needs a little bit of space to uh, operate. So he has to take a half step back maybe and give himself some space to throw and land some punches instead of getting all the way in and smothering his shot. So. Because he has the reach. Yes, but even Samuel though on paper we have Torres uh, weighing six pounds less than Samuel uh, here, we um seem that he is the more powerful puncher. Uh, and, 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 you know, that's kind of misleading because – um, as I look at the tree trunk calves of Torres, he appears to be carrying a lot more weight on his frame than it would appear that Samuel does. Then again, Samuel has the height advantage. This so with height, height comes weight. Correct. Now, like I said at the beginning, Samuel was dealing with some nervous energy. I believe that's up out of there. And... Torres is going, he's tiring himself out. If Samuel just started to pick his shots, I think he can walk away with this one. So. Yeah. We have Samuel trying to establish oh, himself yeah. with a some good right shot. by Samuel. Torres uh, turns the tie, swings him around a little bit. Samuels needs to get up out of that corner immediately. Torres is able to uh, really establish himself uh, and dominate um, Samuel, just keeping him in the corner. So it, it, Samuel is making this a very easy fight for Torres by just allowing himself to walk straight back. And even though Samuel clapped, clipped him with a straight, with a looping right hook right there, uh, Torres was able just to walk right through that and really establish himself as uh, the stronger fighter right now. Yes, and it seems like Torres' punches Do don't have the have same torque power. that they did in the first. There is no they, power, no power anymore. Yeah. He's just pity pat tapping, tapping. You know, we call those kitty cat pat pats. Nick nag patty what? <laughs> And if I, if I was in Samuel, if I was in Samuel's corner right now, I would be telling Samuel that Torres right now is tired. You can see in his punches. And if you land that one, he's probably his legs are gonna go right with him immediately. His legs are going to go. I definitely go. agree. And this next round, Samuel has to come out and put complete pressure on Torres. But I would also say that Samuel probably has lost both of those rounds. He has. However, with this round, he can make up the whole fight. The start of round three, and Torres is back out with more of the same aggression all over Samuel. But Samuel is, is, is paying. Yes. It appears to be throwing I, I, I told you, I told you that nervousness is over with. Samuel's there you go. Yeah. With a strong left hand. Strong left hand by Samuel. Samuel, if Samuel's just he, just let your hands go. You got to fight. As Torres seems to be trying to set up a punch that he's not going to, oh, oh, his legs are going to go. Yeah. It seems like Torres Samuel, is not going to stand on any longer. If Torres keeps throwing those same punches, do I see blood coming from Torres' nose Oh, now? yes, we see, we see, yes. Samuel needs to turn that up. He Samuel has needs to, to fight. turn this fight up. 
or well, he's in risk of getting another eight, standing eight count right now because Torres is literally teeing off just how he was in the first round, and this is where the ref chose to award But the only Torres. difference is those are, those punches have no power like they had at the first round. Yeah, but Torres is still showing the ability to snap back Samuel's neck, so what is the ref seeing in there? If you're if you're seeing what I'm seeing, I'm watching Samuel control this third round. Yeah. If you're seeing what Samuel I'm seeing, I'm watching Samuel up. control this third round. And and this is true. Samuel Another one. Another big one. Those legs down. are gonna go. I told He's you going guys. Down. Back up. Get him down. And and that's this part where I was saying Samuel has to take that half step back. Come on, to Samuel. Give himself some space mm. right there, just like that. Mm. Oh. Hey man, he's a responsible job and for I his think, first fight. First and I, fight. And I think that Samuel should be getting a standing eight count right here from Torres because he's established enough shots to where he should have been awarded a standing eight count for the pain that he's inflicted. Yes. I don't know if the ref is seeing what we're seeing, but Torres' legs, they might be some tree trunks, but they're they're getting chopped down right now. Yes. They're getting weak. That tree can go timber at any moment. Can we get a timber? Doesn't look like we will. Keep those hands going over those hands. Sam oh. very much controlled that third round, but I still see them awarding this fight to Torres. If Samuel keeps fighting like that and he keeps throwing those punches and stays more poised because he did a lot of ducking and a lot of trying to counter with a not enough punches thrown. But he has a very promising, strong right hand. He has a strong hand. future because this is his first fight. And, he, and, and after, he, after he shed all that nervousness out of the way, he did a pretty good job. I, I agree with you. And I could tell you this, if they had another round, it would be over with. One more round, Torres wouldn't last. No, definitely. So, a, a really amazing fight right here. Uh, two young guys fighting really, really hard. Uh, great energy. Would like to have seen more from Samuel. Torres really put it on him. Uh, I really drove him back and, and showed his dominance in the fight. Um, I love what I see. Samuel really showed his ability to take a half step right, back and counter Torres later on in the round in the fight. Uh, Would have liked to see more of that from Samuel all round, and maybe he be. No, it's all for this we'll go to the official decision right now. In the blue corner. And as we, and Mr. as we would have figured that Mr. Torres will be taking home this belt, but like I said before, I my my favorite in this fight is Samuel, and I feel as if this fight would have been any more rounds. So, as that being said, we will head into our final two fights, but before then, we will take a short intermission break and be back with you in a minute. I'm Tom McClendon with Jamir McQuay and Brian Johnson on the broadcast. We are live, Yamo Media That's from the Bear Community Center, right? and we'll be back in a minute. back live here at the Barack Community Center from Columbus, Ohio. I'm Tom Clinton with Yamo Media Productions. And I am here with Carlos Mojica from Columbus Park and Rex. And 
Please tell the people at home how um, events like this help benefit the community here in Columbus, Ohio. Well, first of all, I uh, credit to everyone that put together the event. I know they spent last night and today just getting everything ready, but it's just a good time to showcase the talent that we have right here in our community while also honoring legends that are from our backyard. Uh, it's just like, and a good time to spend time with each other, you know. So, um, how often do we uh, have events like this in our community? So we have events throughout the year. As far as the boxing events go, we actually have four more. The next one's in April 29th. Um, but we are doing events year round during the summer. Uh, we do jazz and rib fest. We have the Rhythm on the River concert series, which are free. The majority of these events are uh, free to attend. Uh, and then we also do other things that are more to deal more with in the community or providing opportunities for those that are interested in working with us or just growing as people. And, and we just saw we're missing action in the ring, people. And I don't know what happened to the ref and what was established just now. My apologies, everyone. Um, here with Carlos Mojica. Um, please tell us, are we going to see more amateur boxing brought back to Columbus like our monthly fights and, and, and our and let's just take a look at the replay right here and find out exactly what happened to the right oh just a just a fumble alrighty so are we going to see more uh, events as far as amateur boxing brought back to Columbus uh, as we used to in our early 80s and 90s yes so this year we started a campaign called boxing is back as you may have noticed since the pandemic we really haven't had any boxing events at any of our facilities. We have four more coming up this year. One is on April 29th. We have one during the Ohio State Fair. Uh, we have one in September and one in November to round out the year. So the hope is that these continue to grow and we continue to showcase the talent that we have here because Columbus is a boxing city. Most certainly is home of Buster James Douglas, uh, heavyweight champion of the world. So. Uh, just tell the people at home, just one more question. These four events, where can we find and look up these amateur events online and where can we find them? Can we find them at Columbus Park and Rec? Where can we find these events at? Yes, yeah, so you can go to the Columbus Recreation Parks website, columbusrecparks.com. If you head over to the events tab, then boxing, you should be able to see the boxing events that we have. And also, if you're interested in signing up for a class, you can do that. James Buster Douglas is one of the coaches for our program, as is um, Gary Page. And then we have plenty, plenty of talent. Uh, Von Sell Johnson, also one of our coaches. So you can learn from the best here in Columbus. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you so much, Carlos Mojica. Uh, we thank you for helping uh, Columbus put on this type of event for our youth and for our community. And we look forward to uh, establishing a long relationship between Columbus Parks and Rec and Yamo Media. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All right, let's get back to the fights, people. And we are getting late into the round today. And that is the end of round one. And I will get us caught up, without a doubt. We are looking at I, Isaac Tabibi from the Redeem team. is age 20, 139 pounds. And this is his 10th amateur fight. First, Mustafa Muhammad from Dayton, age 21, 137 pounds. And he has 15 fights. So, going to, to round two. Sorry about, uh, I know you guys all caught the fight. So I maybe mean, you can tell me who won the first round. First round. Let me make sure. Okay, so first round, I'm seeing the ref fall over. Yeah, okay. they kind of threw the whole fight. <laughs> <laughs> so in this first round, uh, the red and the blue team, are they're both doing good. The ref is taking the L right now. <laughs> <laughs> so they look they look to be uh, establishing their call selves. Call it. Call it. Both looking to be established themselves in the second round. Uh, both open up with jabs. And this is in a red corner. Uh, Tabibi seems to be showing great skill as the ability to step around and throw shots, but Muhammad is no slouch and he has fight in him. Oh, a nice right hand for Muhammad. 
you know me, I have to be biased and stick with the redeem team here. We got to we got to keep it going. And he's landing some very very flush shots right now, but uh, both to BB and Muhammad has seemed to be uh, taking a punch well and delivering a punch well. So very evenly evenly round right now. Let's see who can basically establish themselves and really pull away. Oh, nice oh. one-two combination Big right now. Big overhand by Muhammad. Beautiful work. Muhammad is showing great poise this last 20 seconds. Able to step around, establish the jab, throw an overhand right, and, and just able overall to uh, push the BB back. Muhammad tried to sneak in a sneaky uppercut to BB with an overhand right that just missed. As they tie up a little bit of posture in the middle of the ring, they fight free, hands are free. Muhammad is definitely showing that he is the most experienced fighter. He has the most fights prior. And a warning from the referee against Muhammad to BB turning his head just a little bit to get out of range. And Muhammad uh, took a shot at him. Uh, all fair game. Muhammad back to work though, pushing Tabibi back. Tabibi uh, lands a quick left hook, but takes a right hand, stepping straight back in exchange, and takes a left hook and a straight right hand in the pocket, and then Tabibi looks to tie up again. Muhammad definitely seems to be showing his five fight experience here. He seems to be more poised, throwing the more controlled punches. Muhammad showing a great ability, even with the range dominance, he's able to walk Tabibi down and show it the ability to cut off the ring also on Tabibi. Tabibi means to stay away from that end of the punches. He's like right in. So should he be all the way in or all the way out? And Tabibi is hanging out in no man's land right now. He needs to be for in. In. Yeah, because Muhammad's power is on the end of his punches. <laughs> and he's showing great power on the end of those punches. But what I would like to see, if Tabibi's not going to be all the way in, then Tabibi needs to be all the way out. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that, but we're seeing I a new would phenomenon. Like to see Tabibi in we're definitely seeing the a new pocket. Phenomenon. Yeah, I would definitely like to see him in the pocket, all the way in instead of all the way out. You don't want to be in no man's land. You don't want to be in no man's land. And here's Muhammad coming out and Ooh. trying to establish himself with a straight right hand. With the and flurry of punches, it's almost like it's snowing in the ring. Tabibi went back to that corner. Oh, and they told him to go out there, you know, and turn it up some more. However, as you can see, you have Tabibi trying to establish that jab. And, and, and everyone has a game plan until you they get, get punched, punched in the, in the face. face. <laughs> <laughs> so, cornered by that, Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that being said, right now, whatever the game plan is, once you get punched in the face, forget about it. And now you're back to who you are and your skill set. Square one. And right now, Muhammad seems to be the more skilled fighter at the end of the day. To BB is game though, and he has been taking oh. some shots. Muhammad throwing a series of punches there. He doesn't seem to be holding back anything. Oh, a short oh. left hook from Muhammad. Muhammad seems to be controlling that corner. Oh. Uh, in my opinion, I would say Muhammad has won all the rounds of this fight so far. Clearly. I agree with you, Ali. And, and that would be very sad <laughs> for me to say because this will be EBG's first loss of the night. Out of all their fighters. Oh, I mean. No, the first, their first fight, didn't the, the, the younger guy, uh, was he part of the elite? Oh, he was. He, he did. Was. That yep. was the first fight. You're right. Because he actually shouldn't have lost that fight. The young guy, Woods. Yeah, he shouldn't have lost that fight. Well, I tell you what, Muhammad is putting on an exhibition show right now of just 
inside, outside, uh, fighting off the back foot, fighting coming forward, fighting with the jab. I definitely enjoy his punch runs. Did you see that move? Right at, oh, he's keeping that sidestep got him cleaned up. Right where he wants him right to be. Right where he wants him to be. Every, every move that Tabibi makes, Muhammad seems to be there. He understands his positioning in the ring, and he understands where Tabibi wants to go. And he's taking that away from him. And then he oh. cracks him with an overhand right and a left hook and an overhand right as the fight ends. And that fight will be over with. Muhammad put on an uh, enjoyable performance. Yeah, he's walking away with that. And the ref is saying, let's get this third round underway. And Muhammad comes out and cracks to BB with a left hand and a right hook. And that got the third round underway. And there was that combination of three to the body and that hook that landed. And it was much of the same as we saw in the first three rounds, which is a dominant performance by Muhammad and Tabibi trying to find something established in the fight, which he could not. And here we see Muhammad once again just being in control of the entire fight, holding him. He doesn't seem like he seems to be nervous at all. No, yeah, you can tell he has some experience. Matter of fact, Muhammad is the guy that came over here to see where, where his fight was up. <laughs> he was, he like, was when ready. Am I coming? Yeah, he was ready. Oh, He's I'm, been ready. I'm second to last. I got something for him. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to put it on. So we will get the announcement momentarily. Uh, Muhammad seems to have plenty of energy left as if he could have went three or four more rounds. Been giving them fight. the blues all night. It seemed like that blue corner has had, a, had an advantage all night out that blue corner. They, if, any, if anybody fighter knew what they was doing, that, that might be a lucky blue. You're right. Take a hold of the belt for this bout. In the blue corner, show some love to Mr. Mustafa Muhammad. They, they tried to scare Mustafa Muhammad right there. The announcer appeared to be playing a, a little bit of vocal games with Mr. Muhammad, which almost caused his heart to drop right now. Please follow us on social media at TikTok, Yamo on air at Instagram and Twitter at Yamo Media, on Facebook at Yamo Media 614, and join us live on YouTube, Yamo Media Columbus. Yamo, Yamo, Yamo. We are heading into our final fight of the night. But three years later, we are back in this building. Was it worth the wait? Been a good night. Here we are with the main event. With the main event main here coming event, up, event. we have Jersey Thomas out of Barrick here fighting for his own recreation center here right now where we are, Barrick Recreational Center versus Dewan Brown coming out of Dayton. See, Jersey has three fights to Dewan Brown's four. They're both weighing in at 119 pounds, or is that, no, that, Dewan Brown is weighing in at 114. And Jersey Thomas is weighing in at 119. First in the blue corner, fighting out of Dayton, Ohio. Please put your hands together for Mr. Dewan Brown. <laughs> and in the red corner, representing gloves of boxing in Columbus, Ohio. Please show some love to Mr. Jersey Thomas. And it seems like Jersey Thomas has the home crowd advantage here behind us. Well, this is his gym. This is his boxing center. He is from the Barrick Boxing Community Center. So I would assume the last time we seen a home guy, though, it didn't go so well. No, so, it did not. Let's just hope we close the night on a very positive and strong note. But it has been a very positive and strong uh, 
fight night tonight anyway. So looking for more of the same. And Mr. Brown is coming out looking to establish his dad from Dayton. And Jersey Thomas is getting low, and he's showing us his defense right now. Oh, and now. there we go. Starting off in the first 20 seconds, both fighters seem to be going at it. And Thomas seems to be relaxing and getting his groove right now. Oh. And timing up Mr. Brown. So Mr. Brown is the aggressor, but Jersey Thomas is literally dropping his knees, getting low, coming up with a nice counter game right now. So... Uh, little cat and mouse right now going on. And Jersey Thomas seems to be getting slightly getting the better of it right now. Oh, but there's a right hand overhand. that drops by Mr. Brown to say, wait a minute. I'm still in the building. Mm. And another right hand by Mr. Brown. And that is taking a round back for him. And then a nice jab by Brown. And a nice jab to the body by Brown. And a nice hook by Brown. Brown seems to be keeping Thomas at bay with that jab and that overhand. And another Strong jab straight. by Brown. And another jab by Brown. And if it sounds like a broken record, because that's what Brown is doing. And there's Jersey Thomas. Back on the inside, winging some body shots. Trying to establish his dominance once again. And the head movement coming from Brown. He's using his height to his advantage, and I like that. And Mr. Brown has clearly turned around this first round, and after Ooh, being dominated early him. on, really established himself with that jab and landed an overhand right and a nice oh. left hook to punctuate the round. Thomas conserved his energy. That's back to that energy game again. You start out, you start out on, 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 on a good end. Very impressed by Brown's fight. Very impressed by his fighting style. Lincoln Park. As we see right here, Mr. Brown, as he drops a straight overhand right, then follows up with a nice jab, and then another jab to really keep Jersey Thomas at bay right now. And Jersey Thomas is trying to get on the inside, but Brown is just really, really establishes himself with that left hook and that straight right hand. And close round, I would have to go with Brown uh, for his middle round dominance. For the first round. So as we head into round two, between Brown and Thomas right now. Thomas tries to sneak in a straight left hook underneath the Brown jab to start the round. And he's getting, and he's starting out with that same defense getting low, but Brown appears to be t uh, timing him up as he pops up. And once again, Brown's fighting style is very impressive. He is very confident. You can see in his face that he knows that he is going to dominate his opponent. So the pace has slowed down just a little bit, but Thomas has uh, appeared to throw a one-two to try to establish something right now. And Brown's pace has slowed down a little bit. Not as dominant with the jab oh. right now, but shot a straight right hand right there and really woke up Thomas. A good exchange of punches by both fighters. Oh, oh, nice combination by Thomas. Nice comeback from Brown, one, two, and then an uppercut. Brown with a right hand over the top after a one, two by Thomas. One, two to the body by Thomas. Counter right by Brown upstairs. Both fighters looking to counter here off. Jab, straight left hand, uppercut. Lead uppercut by Brown that connects. Yes, and Brown seems to be, once again, he doesn't, he seems to be very poised, very, very tall in stature. He's throwing strong jabs and overhands this fight. There goes another one. Counter right hand by Brown. 
Brown's right hand is very dangerous. And Thomas seems to be a little tired. He seems to be sucking wind just a little bit. He's not in a good position in this fight to be getting tired right now. He should still have some energy conserved because Brown, is a bit, he has more punches. No more punches, landed more punches. Yes, he definitely has. Um, Jersey Thomas here uh, in front of his home crowd. He needs to turn up in this third round if he wants to get so, the judges behind his back. Last round of the night, ladies and gentlemen. 11 amateur fights. What a evening it has been. But we are to our final, last and final round. Last and final instructions in the corner from the red corner. Last and final instructions from the blue corner. It should be a really good fight. See, what I'm expecting now, I'm expecting Jersey Thomas to come out and put on a dominating performance in front of the home crowd. If he does not, and Dewan Brown continues to have the fight he's been having, then we're going to see another blue victory. I expect Jersey Thomas to put it all on the line right here. And he's looking good right now. Starting out strong by, by, by Thomas. Oh. Brown with a left, a one-two that both connects and snaps the head. Upset. And Thomas appears to be trying to push Brown back, but there's Brown again with that lead uppercut. And Thomas' mouthpiece is on the ground after taking that uppercut right on the chin. There we go. Thomas's mouthpiece seems to need to be rinsed off here. Time out by the ref as he goes and picks up Thomas's mouthpiece to get it cleaned off, and we are back to the action. And Brown throwing a strong combination. A good left hand, solid left hand. A, oh, a good one, two, three. That knocks Thomas's mouthpiece out of his mouth for the second time in only 30 seconds. Uh, in under 30, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. <laughs> With a nice combination by Brown. Straight right hand, left hook. Straight right hand coming here, right here. And that drops that the mouthpiece right here. Oh, buttons. wow. That was a beautiful combination by Dewan Brown here. Like I said, his, his technique. It's like art right now, I watching mean, out of this 14, 15 year old. Great ability to throw that right hand over and over. And Brown it, it appears to be going to finish this off in dominating fashion tonight. I think Brown might be my favorite fighter of the night. I like Williams. Williams was very nice. What I love about Brown is he's only 15 years old. Brown with that sneaky uppercut, that lead uppercut from the orthodox position. And I mean, it is a nice shot. As round three comes to a close, both just posturing Brown looking to hit that left hook and throws a uppercut in the pocket. We are 10 seconds left in the night. Both fighters are looking to give everything they got. Here we go, one. Go out swinging, fellas. And that is it. Fight 11 of 11. Brown versus Jersey Thomas. The one Brown out of Dayton, Ohio versus Turn. Jersey Thomas from Barrett Community Center. What a fight. What a night. What a night. Congratulations to our legends, Gregory Dyer, Alexander Jackson, and Tim Bo. Congratulations to all of our legends tonight. Congratulations to all of our fighters.
What's that, is that? You got another one? Oh, snap. I'm going to hit you on uh, Instagram. So. Like, I'm going to grab it right here. If you know anyone who is interested in being involved in the sport of boxing, bring them to a Columbus Recreation and Parks facility. We have six locations around the city of Columbus if anyone is interested in getting involved. If you know any young people who need something to do, who need help, bring them to the boxing gym. All right? We have something for them. We don't need any more crips, any more gloves, any more Kia boards. We need more young men and women who are willing to get involved in the positive activity that will develop them to become productive citizens in our community. Taking home the belt for this final bout. In the blue corner. Got the blue corner. Hey. This does conclude this evening's events. We want to say thank you once again to the men and women of USA Boxing for providing our services tonight. A special thank you to the staff of their Recreation Community Center. Yep, yep. All of our administrators from. Well, that is the end of our broadcast. I would like to. Uh, special thanks to Adam Dale, the head of Yamo Media Producer. Uh, special thanks to our camera crew, Stephanie Gilbert and Tanya. Special thanks from the Barrett Community Center, Dwight Hughes, Mark Stansberry. Special thanks to Columbus Park and Rec, Carlos Mojica, and associate producer Ryan Dechi and Kayla Williams. I'm Todd McClendon here with... Jameer Marquay and Brian Johnson on the call. Thank you everyone for tuning in to this live broadcast of Yamo Sports presented by Yamo Media. Thank you and have a blessed night.